Hello everyone, this is BA Factor. And Game Girl. We are here to bring you another free for all. This is an eight player free for all on the World Oasis. This is a uh, world uh, in, a, in a one world system that I have designed specifically for free for alls that allows eight players to play with even starting mechs and a fairly even distance between each player. Uh, there's, there's uh, you know, an even distribution of mechs in between the players they need to fight for. However, it's not enough that you can just uh, turtle in and stay there the entire time. And there's no water spawns, but people are spawned next to the water to fight for the water. And the players we have are, of course, B8. We have Corgi Army, which is a great guy. He's fun to play with. We play with him often. Me, of course, Game Girl. And we have Fucking Ponies Man. He's a good guy we play with often. He's very aggressive. Legolas Too Fast is also a guy that we play with often and is uh, really good. Then we have Dark Dragon, who we found out recently is Pony's friend. We have David Miller and Captain Justin that we're not familiar with just yet. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to fire it off. I usually do it straight from my perspective, but there's a couple things I want to show here um, with everybody open. To start off with, you'll see I'm actually being scouted here by Legolas. When I started this particular session, my goal was to uh, go ahead and mass units, and I was going to focus on ants and docks, and I'm going to attack one player all in, and that includes my commander as well. I'm going to take everything because I want to make sure it works, and then I take that base as quickly as possible. I want to be the first person to take somebody out so that I can secure that base, and then I'm going to lock down both both sides and start booming my economy to prepare for the middle game. That's that's my goal here. Now, while this is uh, getting started, let me show you something about how I chose which player to attack. You see I have uh, Game Girl, uh, Green, and Legolas right here, and Brown. Now, you know, I might have attacked Brown, but it's a little bit far away. Um, I could attack Green. It's not that far away, as you can see. I do have a little bit of structures here, um, but there's just not many mexes, right? So I, I saw Legolas, and I, I chose to attack Legolas for a few reasons. One, um, I like that he is in this piece of earth right here. I like that there's a choke here, a choke here, a choke here, and a choke here, okay? And, and I also like that if you see in the center, there are quite a few mechs to control. So if I have blue, then I could focus on potentially brown next, and I have a triangle here that is well protected. Uh, it has lots of mechs between two bases and the, the third base and the middle protection, and I have a triangle. I often go for that triangle. I find it easier for you to defend versus having a long strip away. If I look at green here, even though he is closer, um, I don't know what's down here. I don't have control over that. There's not a lot of mechs here. And uh, Game Girl, you know, she's got some, she might have some Navy going on and could potentially shell this stuff, and including this base right here might be shelled from the water. Um, I have the same thing going on over here, but I still like this centerpiece. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I want to state something while I'm moving over here. I do like that Legolas has put a radar up to see what's coming. Yes, but I think that the location of that radar could be a little bit better in this particular situation. Now, he doesn't know that I'm going to rush him, so that's, that's one thing. But, you know, if that radar had been up here, or been down here, it would have been in play the entire game, and not likely on a direct path to me. He could have seen the same information, and not necessarily lost it if I rushed right in. So that's what I like about that. Uh, there's a few other interesting things about this engagement, and I'll go ahead and I'll slow it down a little bit. Um, I don't want to wait too, too long, but you see all these trees right here? When you're, when you're having a battle between two armies and trees, of course, they do catch on fire, that's one thing. But also, the reason they catch on fire is because the bullets, the, uh, you know, everything being fired, hits the trees instead of the other units, and that's what catches them on fire. So there's some interesting things you can do if you're ever engaging somebody in a forest-type environment. Um, for instance, if you come in to attack them and the fire starts to happen, if you pull back and have them come at you, uh, then they might be shooting through some of the trees and blocking their fire, while you have a clear path and can shoot them, it gives you a small edge. Now, in this particular game, and I'll go ahead and change the perspective now so we can see what it was like for me. Um, 
I don't have my air here yet. I will be bringing it over here real soon so I can see what's going on. And I did not see those mines. That was fortunate. Good location for Legolas to, to lay in because of the structure right here. But at the same time, um, I just I didn't even end up hitting him. This is probably confusing him a little bit, having my commander on the front line. Legolas plays with me uh, fairly often, and I don't typically all in with my commander on the front line. So that's a bit dangerous. Now you're going to watch here. You see this fire going on right here. Watch me start to pull back so that I can get a clean range on his units while he's still going through some of the uh, trees on mine. It also gives you an easy or a little bit safer way to get the commander up and go ahead and, uh, and do a unit cannon. He's got to pull back. And I'm streaming my units from the other side to, uh, to make this happen. Again, this is, this is quite dangerous. Not recommended for everybody to do it. Don't. This is a pretty large force he's got here. I'm not going to lie. I got to get a couple of good unit cannons. I probably could have been a better job with my units. Um, that whole tree thing I was talking about is working in his favor now. See, he's got a clear shot on me, and I'm kind of still shooting a few trees. This is getting a little dangerous. If I didn't have some good unit cannons there, I'd probably be dead right now, without a doubt. And things are kind of slowing over a little stream. I'm a little slow in getting up a gate and a wall and a little teeny fire base to kind of hold off. So, heck, I might even... Yep. Nice little uber cannon for both of us there to get some units. Um, getting below 50% health, it is time to put up a wall. If I were in Legolas's position, I would have put up a wall for him as well. Because if he allows me to get a foothold on his production line, uh, that's going to be no good for him. He's not going to be able to do that. I'm already going to kill this building, and he's now down one building. He's got to build another one. What is this? It looks like Corgi Army is coming in, fooling around too. He is probably very, very confused seeing two commanders in one base right now. He and I play a lot, and he knows how I play, and this is not how I play. And I do have a point defense also, and uh, I'm going to have this... Look at this. I'm going to go ahead and build my Tier 2 right here. That's a little bit risky also, but a little bit of a mind game for Legolas. He's probably thinking, oh, shit. What is he doing? Why is there structures going up in my base, let alone Tier 2? I did not have time to go back to my base and do anything. I, again, I'm all in here. This is do or die. So, as you can see, it did play a little mind game with him. He's coming out with his commander to answer this. Um, and at the same time, if I remember correctly, we get a little three-way action going here as well. Now this building is going to also absorb a little bit of his firepower. Um, hitting my units right now, which is good. Let's see what happens here. This, I remember this being interesting. Now he is getting hit by a turret. That's hurting. Here comes Corgi with some bombers. Ouch. 15%. 14%. And in the process of that, I also, between my turret and the few ants I had left, have gone ahead and killed Legolas. So, my all-in worked, but I am a little worse for wear here. Um, you know what, this might be a good time to open it up, don't you think? Let's see. Yeah, let's take a look and see what everyone else is doing. Let's do that. Alright, so we zoom this out here, we'll see that the, the all-in did work, and you can tell that I did have quite a bit of production power here. So, and, you know, Corgi is looking like he's getting ready to, uh, to hit me. There's one little risk here I, I took, and that's, I didn't expect Corgi to see me. And with him seeing me and seeing what I did, and he now knows that player's dead, he's probably, if he's not being harassed, going to come and try to take me out while I'm a little bit weak. So let's move on here. we got Game Girl has set up shop in this, uh, in this lake. I like that. She's got uh, Corgi behind her, but it looks like he's kind of burying and he's, you know, barricading himself in. That's always a good sign when you're on one side, players are barricading them in. You know that you only have to concentrate on the other side. Uh, it looks like we got a little action going on here. And it looks like a little teeny standoff here as well. Yeah, we've been arguing over that side of the lake the about the whole game from the start. But when I saw White over there, I kind of laid off, saved my units, let White handle it. As we said, Pony is a very, very aggressive player. And just like myself, uh, he's moving in to take somebody out. No doubt wants these resources. You know, looking at this situation, we're watching this replay. Having another player with Navy off of this coast, uh, even if Pony takes this player out, this is going to be in... Uh, this is going to be under dispute for a long time. I, I don't even have to already know what's going to happen to be able to tell you that because when you have a navy, uh, it usually it usually does a good job of protecting an area that's close to the shoreline. Let's take a look. Pony has set up, similar to me, very aggressive stance, lots of structure. He's already tier two, so he is doing very well uh, 
for starting out. Uh, Brown here looks like a turtle player to me. He is bunk running on all sides here and uh, teching right now, getting a little satellite options up. Uh, Dark Dark Knight is it? Dark Dragon. Dark Dragon. I don't know if I'd categorize him as a turtle player. Uh, it looks like it at start, but I do know that he, uh, he masses quite a bit of units. I'd say he's kind of a cicada also. He's got the P.A. mullet going on here. This is the uh, I don't want any business in the back but all the parties in the front type of uh, situation. It's uh, We see this quite a bit in P.A. And we got Corgi. And as we thought, hey, this Corgi has come in. Did he come in with another bombing force? Let's take a look. Ooh. That's Tier 2. That's Tier 2 air. I want to see this. What have I gotten back to? I'm at 26% now. Bombers, tier two air, five percent. Wow. I'm at five percent. That is, I believe the, th I believe he hit me three times in that attack with air, and then started coming in with land, and I had to go ahead and push this back a little bit. Uh, but Corgi has got a pretty good econ setup. You know, this is, um, this is interesting. Now I've got tier three, and I could be booming my economy. But I have to get my commander repaired, and I will need my engineers to do that. So if we look at the economy, you can probably see that I am falling behind. Um, I don't feel too bad about that. I have the production up. I have enough units to protect me. As long as I get my commander healed, I'll be good. And I have enough control over real estate and enough mechs. And I love seeing a turtle player near me when I'm doing this because I don't have to worry about them going out on raids. If this were a warlord or a strategist or even a cicada player... Uh, definitely a jackal. This stuff would be raided constantly. Although he is in your lake over there. He is in my lake, and you know what was his name? I remember Captain Justin. I don't know that I like a captain off of my shore. Definitely don't like that at all. But um, I still feel pretty good. I'm going to be able to catch up with Econ, no problem here, and I feel pretty safe with the amount of units that I have producing. And once I get my commander done, I will start uh, boosting my economy. So I'm, I'm okay there. Now... I'm going to be doing that for a while, so let's see what's going on elsewhere. Uh, we did see, uh, right here, right below my base, we do see that uh, Pony is moving on, or moving into Brown. Now, Brown being a turtle player, he spread out a little far for a turtle player. And he just, you know, Pony was able to come right in here, and he's got these Geely, so as long as he's got vision on this commander, he's sniping it the entire time. It, if Brown could have stopped this. He could have stopped this if he would have micromanaged his uh, his defensive structures to take out these Geely uh, and brought his commander in to, at the same time, to Uber Cannon it. It would have been dicey, but he could have done it. So, I mean, a little, little micromanagement there could have saved that job. But now, let's see, Pony, well, he was trying to take this, but it looks like you're, uh, you're laying claim as well, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay, so as I thought, this is definitely going to be uh, under dispute for a while here. So he's gone and taken another player out. Again, aggressive player. He's already taken out two players. Um, yep. Here's the dispute going on, but the Navy is definitely going to win out. And now he's going to get this Econ going. So he's probably doing pretty well Econ-wise. Let's see. Uh, Pony, 294. Yep. Corgi, 378. Dark Dragon, 360, 205. Uh, King Girl, 70. You're a little bit behind right now in the Econ uh, range. you got people all around you that have absorbed a lot of your mexes or a lot of mexes that you could have gotten. That also happens to me when I'm going Navy along with ground and air. I haven't quite gotten my energy and mechs down that I need for all of that. Yeah, definitely. Here's another attack on me with bombers. This one didn't work out at all. I have plenty of spinners to defend that. He's relentless. Now, you know, in a situation like this where, you know, I, I'm now starting to get some economy going, and uh, I know Corky very well. He and I... I think Corgi has a special place on his mantle for my commander's head. He loves to take me out, and I certainly love to take him out at the same time. So with everything looking good around me and surrounded by turtle players and cicada players, I'm going to go ahead and move in on him. Now, I'm gonna, let me just show you this while this is moving in. So I've got this structure right here, okay? And he's got navy right here. So this is definitely a no-go. Uh, and there's some structure here. So my goal is to come around here or to come around here, and he does have defenses there. I do see those defenses I was just talking about, so I have to pull back out and go even further. This is getting dangerous. I am moving way out of position to hit him, and he has, I don't see this, but he has, I know that he's a good player, so I know he at least has the production capacity that 
my attrition rate is going to uh, to make this a, a loss for me. I go ahead and move in a little bit just to poke around and keep him busy. If I'm poking around here, he's not poking around the other side of the map. So that's my goal. I feel pretty safe with trees around because, you know, as you see, all the trees just take the fire and the units barely get hurt. So you can do that a little bit more in the forest versus on open territory. I don't think a lot of people know that because people don't usually like to play with, with trees. They think they're annoying, but you know what? It's, it's all the terrain can be used to your advantage. So that's very nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull back and boom a little bit more. Now, while that was happening, I believe, let's see, what else is going on? Yep, he's setting up shop here. He, stand that still hasn't taken place there. You don't have to worry about, oh, it looks like, this is surprises me. This, this really surprises me. Look at this. He's got all these defenses, right? And over here, nothing. I, he did not scout well. He did not scout well. And you know, I've, I've often said, or, uh, you know, Pony's a very good player. Absolutely. But I think of him very much as a Warlord style player where he picks an enemy and he just charges with it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's a, that is a very good way to play. And it, and it it serves it serves a purpose. It does very well, but in a free for all game, he'd do just a little bit more scouting. Could have made a, a little bit more educated decision there, and could have had an easier uh, path in to me and weakening me versus going through all these defenses for uh, for Corgi. That's just my opinion. But he wins plenty of games, so you know who am I to say what he's doing? I like this. This. You know, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it certainly has a psychological effect on the player it's being done to. When you see somebody doing this, you kind of panic a little bit, and you want to get it to take care of. And look at this. On the other side of Corgi, I'm doing the same thing. I'm eating his mechs. His, you know what? If you can't get in here, if my air can't get in here because of the flak, and he's got navy so my land can't get here, heck, take your orbital in. Eat his, eat his resources up. He's getting attacked by purple. Triple teamed. Oh. Yes. We are triple teaming Corgi. We did not do that on purpose, by the way, but it is certainly happening. We are triple teaming Corgi. Now, I do remember this point in the game now. Let's see. I can see this happening. See my perspective? A little tier 2 air. Look at that. Uh, he didn't really utilize it very well. He could have done a lot more damage with that air uh, other than taking down two structures. Now, I have um, radars up as well, and I can see what's going on. So I see all of this action happening, and I, I reach out to uh, Corgi and ask him if he would like to have a little pack to uh, kind of hold off attacking each other. Not to team up on somebody, but just to, you know, we just, we just want a little line up here and uh, we'll stay. Well, I obviously do it after this <laughs> because that was intended to kill his commander. Uh, but I do do that and we hold off this little line so that we're not attacking each other. I think I recognized at one point that I see this happening and that's when I decided to reach out to him. I have a gate on top of me, and I don't have anything over here. And even though I have mass production, as you can see, I have a lot of production. So, and I'm getting more and more of it. Earlier, when I said, uh, "Ooh, something going on down here." Let's take a look. He's trying to build. Speaking of orbital. Yeah, Pony's attacking everybody with the orbital. Okay, let's go back. Um, I had this mass production. Thought I was going to take a look at the econ. That's what I wanted to see here. 298, 219, 378. Dark's doing really well. Pony, 442. I recognize uh, that Corgi's being attacked. I have this. This is going to come in here. we got to concentrate on Pony. So that was the goal. And, yeah. He does look like he's getting a little bit weak here. So I think it was the right move. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Is get down here and, and, and address this. Let's go ahead and I'm going to fast forward it so you can see that happening. Now... I come down to build a couple gates and I'm flooding in with some units here. He does have orbital. I'm not all that worried about it. Let's see what have we got going on down here. You know, at the same time I did go ahead and send in a unit cannon down here. I thought he had this space. I didn't know this was under... Um, I didn't know this was being disputed between my wife and Pony. So I had sent some units down there to hurt his economy. That's a common thing to do. If you're attacking on one side, go ahead and attack on the other side to trigger some econ. Um, and right here, this was a very nice play on Pony's part. It just didn't work out this time. He was trying to uh, flank me by shooting a unit cannon when my army was in place here to kill my shellers. I had just happened to pull back because I was losing a few and I wanted to, 
to, uh, you know, pad to get some more units together there before I head back in. Now, let's see, looking at this, he is really trying to lock this down, and I see that. So, I'm still going to go ahead and attack him. I'm just trying to get all my units together. Big production, big production. Tons of units. What I'm going to do here is, since he's got a double air going here, I'm going to go ahead and move around this way. And go ahead and get through. And I'm going to take a few losses from these anchors, but at the same time, I'm going to be able to, j to group bunch his units up on these structures. And that's going to make my shells do a lot of damage to this force. Plus, he can't just, he's either going to charge me or go back all the way around it, which is going to allow me to get through. See the shellers destroying them as they're clumped together? That's exactly what I want. Now I'm going to move this small force around, little micro and this force forward to address this so he doesn't flank me. Meanwhile, while that's happening, we found out, as we said, uh, you know, as Gangrel said, that these guys are friends. We didn't realize it until just now that, and I commented in the game, I think they're working together. And Pony had an excellent response since the beginning. So it looks like they uh, had fully planned to go ahead and team up here and try to uh, win this. Now, I guess a lot of people might have a problem with that. I don't. I play Fear for Alls because I like the volatility of just anything can happen type of, type of situation. So, I, you know what? If someone wants to do that, that's fine. I don't mind. Well, they weren't teaming up to kill your commander. They were more or less protecting each other. I think that's a big difference. I've been teamed on once when one player only made hummingbirds and the other one only made bombers right at the beginning. So they just picked off everybody one by one. I think that's a big difference than protecting your friend. You know what, King Girl? You make a you make a good point. There, it wasn't a um, you know it wasn't. They didn't determine ahead of the time that they were going to have a strategy specifically to take a player out. They're just playing together as friends inside of a game and supporting each other. And that definitely is very different than strategizing before a game and saying, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm, you're going to support you to that and we're going to snipe this person and snipe this person. So that's a very, very good point. What's going on here? Why are you heading over here? I have a vision Look at that. of Pony's commander with my satellite. You do? And I made some orbital fabrics, and I thought, huh, I'll go see what I can claim. I like that. Now, there's something I would, I would suggest. You have, here they are, and you have a satellite that's joined with them. Yes, I, I kind of grabbed everything and didn't realize it at the time. And the Avengers got there first instead of staying with them to protect them. And then the satellite slowed everything down, and he had time to build an umbrella. Yes, I see that. If these units weren't attached to this one on the move over here, they would have been over here. Um, about twice as fast as that, and they could have eaten this umbrella beforehand, and that would have been it. I mean, that would have been it. He would have been gone because you have sight, and you have three orbitals, and you could eat anything before he puts it down, and then also eat all of his important structures. So that's something to remember. If you have a uh, a satellite attached to your units, it will slow down because it the, the formation will move at the lowest speeds, uh, lowest form. I'm sorry, the lowest unit speed. So let's look here. It looks like you finally won. Uh, the you know the dispute there. I guess I probably had a little bit to do with that by distracting him some. He is still active. Again, aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Everything happening. He's still attacking multiple people here. You know that that's more like a uh, a jackal at the moment than uh, than a warlord. He's not just targeting me. He's targeting everybody. And I'm doing the same. I am focusing completely on pony. Um, I believe that he still is a pretty strong player with his production, and I know that I probably should take a look at Corgi at one point, and I saw he had a lot of air, so I answered that by doing this, and I did it in a way away from this, so that if he did fly over, he'd fly through that, so I don't have to really concentrate on that, and I put these here because Purple had air, and I wanted to concentrate on both sides. I'm a little weak on Game Girl's side, so that was a little dangerous. Look at this flood, opening up both valves here. I am flooding... I am flooding this, and I have a couple more down here coming as well. I have tremendous production capacity. Check this out. 700 income on metal. 400, 475, 375. Army of 800 units to 400, 300, 300, and Dra Dark Dragon 800. Wow, that's a lot too. I'm glad I'm not facing him head on. So I'm going to go ahead and move in here. And, oh, getting attacked a little bit by Gangrel's uh, navy. That's... That's exactly why I did not take this base. Well, you're mowing through my territory. 
you get a range on that. So I'm, that's exactly why I went the way I went. I'm I'm taking some losses on my uh, my long journey down here to uh, Pony's base. I'm moving everything I can over there. I, I'm sort of all in on it. I certainly want to make sure I I take it this time. Unit cannon in play as well. And here he comes. Let's see how this is going to take place. This is an interesting battle because we have, you know, we had the structure here. We have these structures here. Um, you know, there there's some econ here. His main base is right here. And he's got some defenses here. So, given how this is going, it would it would definitely pay for me to come this direction because of his econ. Um, I could go this direction also to hit his to hit his uh, his production. Uh, and, you know, it's either or. I don't know which way would be better. The fact that he has two bases, he's a base over here and a base over here. Uh, he could he could hit me from two sides, so it might be better to come from this side. That way I can address one army at a time. It looks like I'm not paying attention to any of it and just going right down the middle. This is certainly a mistake on my part, and this is a good play on Pony's part. This time his flank did work. He's able to go take out some very nice shellers and uh, with this uh, unit cannon. I highly recommend you players try this at home. That, that's, that's very nice. I just happen to have a lot of units, though. Bring up the chrono back? Yeah. Okay, I'm, this force is not uh, not doing so well, but I am going to while I'm here try to take out these unit cannons. I probably cost him a lot of unit production there because I killed him before some of them could launch. Um, you know what? This whole attack, I think, was because I didn't make a, a clear choice. I wasn't able to to get my group together and hit in uh, you know hit in mass, and I was split between two armies with. Uh, with a with a force that could have taken either army separately, so that's a blunder on my part. But guess what? We have mass production, so let's just try it again. Why not? This is smart too for these players out there. You you see somebody doing this on you. Um, if he had had some sight over here, he could have saw this going on because I built that to answer this, and he could have gone and eaten this umbrella and then eaten these gates to prevent me from flooding in. That's that would have been the better move on his part. But you know what? In the heat of battle. A lot of stuff happens. A lot of stuff happens. So let's go ahead and see. This time, I'm going to do a, do this a little bit better. This time, I am going to hit from one angle, and you'll see that it's a drastically different uh, outcome. I'm also going to get my sight over here so that I can, uh, you know, target what I want to target with my shellers. It's a nice battle, and while they're over here, might as well go ahead and use the few bombers I have and eat up some of his defenses so I don't lose a few tanks. Very large force coming in. I don't think he's very happy about that. I did launch a small force over here of my unit cannon. I took out a tier 2 structure. My, my hopes with his commander might have been moving this way and I could intercept him, but that just wasn't the case. But you know what? Sometimes you got to take a few risks. You never know what's going to happen. It certainly is not looking good for Pony right now. It looks like I'm about to gut his base. Getting on uh, getting on an opponent's production line makes all the difference in the world. Oh, here comes his friend, Dark Dragon. Fortunately, I had I was prepared for it. I had plenty of uh, anti-air this time. I don't have a lot of spinners in here because I wanted to pack a punch. I figured I had plenty of hummingbirds to assist. As long as, of course, my hummingbirds are around to do so. Speaking of sight and orbitals, Mind if we look around the map to see what other people can see? Yeah, let's do that. So this base is being gutted. You have quite a bit of orbital satellites. Let's look at you. Put it on pause a moment. You got it. Okay, so you're watching this whole battle take place. You can see what's coming from you from Corgi's side. What's this? Uh-oh. What's this? Yeah, look what I just saw. Okay, this might be a good time to tell the audience that, uh, you know, my wife and I play a lot of free-for-alls together. We have one standing rule. Uh, our standing rule is that I cannot attack her without permission, and she can attack me any time she wants, just like any other player. Like I said earlier, I play free-for-all games and RTSs because I like the volatility of anything could happen. And with that in mind, 
working toward that, uh, the type of entertainment I enjoy from that, having my wife uh, try to approach me at any point in time really does uh, amp it up for me. I do lose occasionally to her from situations like that, but you know what? Hey, look, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbs. Yeah, and if you saw your hummingbirds come back, I made the mistake of saying, hey, babe, can I kill you now? And you answered that with pulling all of your birds back. Yes, I'm not going to lie. I was very proud of this game, and I did not want to lose. I certainly wanted to stay alive. Uh, she didn't have to ask me for permission. That was a mistake on her part. It did, it did keep me alive, but look what it did to my force at the same time. That really expensive army is going to be disintegrated by uh, Dark Dragon at the same time. Actually, you got some nice vision there. Well, I could see also with the satellites that... Uh you were attacking Pony, and I knew that was to my advantage, so that's kind of why I asked. Okay. The Pony is has been hurt pretty good. Now, do you have any satellite on him? Because he has lost most of his base. Oh, here comes Corgi. So Corgi and Dark, or Corgi and Pony have still been fighting, and you're coming in now. I'm guessing that's his commander. Yep, and it is. Um, yeah, let's look at you. Oh, no, you know what? You're right. I did see Pony at that point. I thought you did. Yep, here he comes. He was taking a stroll by himself along the lakeside. Well, that was the last stroll he's going to take. What's going on here? I want to see this battle. Free-for-alls are so much fun. Always action. Always lots going on. Look at this. The nice force, of course. Corgi's shellers are kind of out of place here. Um, I'm not sure if, it should have, if they were behind the building, he would have annihilated this without losing any of them. I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah. That's a very large force from Dark Dragon. He may be, uh, he may be striking out now that Pony's, Pony's gone and trying to go ahead and get somebody else dead. Fortunately for Corgi, his commander is well protected. Well protected. He's still coming. Let's see here. Hmm. He's running out of units. Corky is running out of units. This looks scary. That's a that's a very dangerous group there. Very, very dangerous group. I want to see how he addresses that. How we're doing that. We'll keep an eye on this. So I expect Corgi to lose a lot there. Let's see what's going on over here. So you're now taking this. Okay. It looks like I'm booming again, getting my econ going. Okay, we'll take a look at the econ. Let's see, economy 842, 508, 38 army, yep. Boosted my con my uh, my mobile unit count. I have quite a few units again. Quite a few. You had a ton. That's yeah. a lot of red. I have a lot of production. Yeah, he's hurting right here. He's got a few bombers, so a few spinners would take care of that. He needs uh, just a few spinners in this group, and he would. Whoa! What happened there? That was, yes, that was a Hulkins. You know, there's been a lot of discussion about Hulkins being expensive and fragile and things like that. But, you know, in the right location, they do more than people realize. Yeah, you kind of got to micro them a little bit. But uh, one good Hulkins fire on some long range, you can take out five, six units easily. And that can change the, uh, change the battle. And the structure can do that from all angles by the center of your base. So that's very, very nice. Let's see here. Now, while <clears throat> while Pony is gone and Corgi is uh, dueling a little bit with what's going on over here? Oh, he's trying to hit from different angles. I see that. Okay. Uh, my next strategic choice very very poor, very poor. I decide that in uh, looking at the map that I was going to go ahead and just take out Dark Dragon. Why not? Right? I have so many units. Let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, looking at things strategically, I did know that I do know Korg is a very good player, and I knew he was pretty big. I should have just moved along this side, and um, okay. So 
in this situation with all the units that I have in the Econ, the best thing to do probably would have been to come this direction and attack Corgi. Absolutely. Uh, there's no reason for me to get cocky and go right down the middle in between two players to take out this player. These two guys are currently battling. I've got plenty of protection from Purple's air, so, you know, I should have gone this direction. That was a blunder on my part. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and take him with... Whoa. Well, something is in the air. And that is not heading where I thought it would be heading. Where is it going? Hmm. Um, all the, all the press. All the press. But what? How do you know where... Huh. You know where I'm at. Slightly. I had how it. Did, how did you stop all those? Uber cannon, you see that? I heard he was attack a hotkey back to him and an Uber cannon, and I'm getting the hell out of dodge. I did not expect that coming from you. I certainly did not expect that. Um, yeah, I have nothing around here right now to protect me. Uh, my entire army, I must have moved everything down there. The only thing I have is what's been produced, produced since I originally moved that stuff down there. Everything is going on a, um, an attack on purple. Oh, look out. Oh, here it comes again. Jesus, oh, you're assisting this. Uh-oh, where are you going now? You got bombers coming in also, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm bringing in uh, reinforcements this time. Well, I'm at, uh... I think uh, I lost vision on you is why I brought those in. Yep. And you landed back in the same spot I was. If I had still been there, I'd be dead right now. Absolutely dead. I'm trying to address this now. But I found you again. Yes, you did. Now, I have down here a uh, nuke defense, a uh, unit cannon, some flak, and a lot of production. So, I'm going to move my commander to a spot where he is safe. Uh, and I'm also going to try to keep, since I have this production here, he's going to have a, a default bodyguard here as long as I don't move it away from that. And also I'm going to try to get get him healed. You can see I'm already healing. Oh, you're launching again? Maybe. The heck? I don't remember this one at all. Is this coming at me again? Um, maybe. Yes. Oh. You predicted that I would be right there? Yes, I did. I saw you walking that way. Wow. Look, are those levelers killing it, it looks like? Yes. These are, these are, yeah, these are levelers, you're right. <clears throat> heal up, buddy, heal up. Wow, that is insane. Well, I'm going to be in protected here, so that's fine. Let's go back now. This is why I wasn't paying attention to that when she got me. She picked the perfect time to address this because I was just moving in my entire army uh, into purple and trying to deal with uh, this navy. It's never really a good idea to face a navy with ground units. Um, it just You're going to lose a ton of units, and I am. And look at this. He's got one, two, three Hulkins as well, and he's building bombers, and I don't have very... I have very few spinners in there right now. So, that wasn't very smart of me. I, I do believe I, at the time I knew that I had the production. I knew that I had the massive army. And I just got cocky. Decided to go direct down the middle and take somebody out. It was, uh, this is what happens when you get cocky. Yeah, and while you're being cocky, you might want to check out your commander again. I should be protected now. Weren't you going to leave a land force near him? I, I do have a land force near him. It's right here. Corgi's... What the hell's going on here? Corgi's attacking me too. Got boom bots and boxes... Oh, he probably saw my uh, nuke go up. I'm having to defend... This is what happened to my land force. Corgi is coming up and in. So I decided to address it by moving these two forces out to intercept. And I left my commander blank again. But at least I'm at full health. So that's nice. And I'll go ahead and I can carry back on with about... Oh, wait a minute. You're going you're gonna to get vision on me again, aren't you? I see that satellite coming in. Yes, I'm moving my satellite just for a little bit. Yes, you already see it. And there you are. What's going to happen down here? Well, my cannon is ready. Just waiting to see you. Borgie. I can't believe that just happened. 
Yep, there it's firing. And here's my bodyguards way over here. Trying to keep Corgi's boom bots off of me. Got a nuke just about done. I thought I was in really good shape. I've already healed myself to 100%. Got two Hulkins here. But they're... Are they in range? Oh, they're going to try to fire, but it's just going to be too late. Oh. Yeah, and that was on top of your head. Look at that. Ooh, pretty. That's not how to spell wife. <laughs> I guess not. Oh, uh, was I... Oh my gosh. I, look at this trail of tears here. Oh man. That's what happens when you get cocky. Your wife puts you in a place. Wow. Well, let's see what's going on now that I have been taken out. 500, 366, 270. Armies. Uh, looks like Corgi's ahead. I believe that Corgi is going to pick up, if I remember correctly, right where I left off. Let's see. Yep. Now, I do like this. So, Dark, as we said, was a new player. He's done a pretty good job. He's taken advantage of the terrain here. Uh, and he's built a wall and some defenses, which pushes a choke point here. And he's got Navy down here, uh, which is nice. He only has to defend from one side, Navy. He's also got some anchors up top. So he's got a pretty good force going here. For a new player that didn't expand all that well, he's done a pretty good job of bunkering in. You know, I want to make a point here also. If you notice, he's got a wall on the back side, but there's no in-out route except on the far side and I've seen a lot of times people build walls all the way around them but that prevents their own units from going out to attack and defend. It does, you can't bottleneck units trying to go through your own wall. I sometimes will make a wall like that and then delete it after the fact but uh, let's see here. I want to get some action going. Hey, fast forward a little bit so we can get going here and see what's going to happen. It looks like He's moved in preparing for the air with spinners and hummingbirds and has a ton of shellers. That's going to make short work of, uh, of his base. That's for sure. While that's going on, my satellites, I have vision of the fight and I have vision of Purple's commander at one point. But I can't get to him. Looks like Corgi's having trouble too. That was strike two on Corgi's part. Come in. That's the second land force and his second group of bombers coming in. Try to take him out. Oh wow, he's massing units. Looks like he's bringing his doxes over to uh, to assist. He's sending everything he's got at him. That's his unit count right now. And you've got to imagine that's uh, quite a bit of doxes there. 1,600. Let's see how that works out. He's destroyed that as well. Strike three, Corgi. Oh, his bombers. Strike four. Four attempts. He is pumping out those bombers over there. He is indeed. I don't think purple's long for this world. He's bringing in the uh, slammers for their torpedoes. That's going to push purple around potentially. Maybe move him out of position. Oh, it's not going to matter. He did a better job this time. Watch this, guys. This is this is important to see. So, uh, see how his units are coming in right here? Uh, if Corgi were to continue with this arrow, uh, these flak would shred him. However, if you go ahead and let your units box back out and then fly in position over the commander and then target him, they all come in from different angles and they have a better chance of, uh, of getting him. Watch this in play. Absolutely. Um, if he had still came down in an angle there with the arrow, he would have lost all those units like he did the first time. That was uh, That's the way to do it. That's how you uh, attack when you're uh, addressing flak. It doesn't always work, but it certainly has a higher percentage chance of working than uh, just streaming in straight for the commander. So now if purple's gone, and it is just Corgi versus Game Girl. Yeah, I made a big mistake by not expanding and I know you were, you kind of had me surrounded for most of the game, and he was on the other side, so I didn't expand early, but I never really did it toward the end of the game. So there's just a long battle going on. Yeah, we're at 72 minutes here, and you see it's 89 uh, is the game. I know you guys 
know from watching this on YouTube that you don't have that much time to go. So what we're going to do here, since this is a siege on a lake, we're going to speed this up and uh, have a little fun. So here we go. And that is an eight player free for all. This is BA Factor. And Game Girl. Signing out. Hope to see you in the lobby.